So why are Republicans doing everything they can to try to suppress the vote across the country? If you want answers, just look at the census data. Let's talk about that in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. If you share my concerns, maybe you could like this video and subscribe to this channel, maybe even click that little bell that will notify you when I post something new. So Charles Blow of the New York Times pointed out in his editorial today that it was a terrifying census for white supremacists. And of course, as always, I'll post links to the articles down below. Charles Blow, as usual, is correct. And if you wonder why, People who are Trumpists behave the way they do, or Republicans are doing everything they can to try to suppress the vote, or they've taken certain policy positions that seem irrational. Well, you just need to look at the census data to see why. According to the census data, for the first time in American history, the absolute number of white non-Hispanic residents has declined. There actually are fewer white Americans than there were 10 years ago, and that's the first time in history that that has happened. So where is all the growth gone? Well, there's a dramatic jump in the Hispanic population. The Asian population also saw significant increases. And the black population also increased substantially, accounting for as much as 10% of America's growth. But the biggest and most shocking increase were among non-Hispanic people who identified as having more than one racial background. That group more than doubled from 6 million to 13 and a half million. The truth is, it's pretty hard to be a white supremacist when you acknowledge the fact that you are partially of another race. This trend is highlighted by a graphic that G. Elliot Morris included in his newsletter, which again, I'll link to down below, that demonstrated a significant link between opposition to Donald Trump and population increase. In fact, the 40% of counties that experienced the most growth in the country over the past 10 years are also the four counties that gave Donald Trump his lowest margins, with all of them giving him less than 40% of the vote. And the 20% of counties that experienced the most growth gave him less than 20% of the vote. This data only highlights other data that we were aware of beforehand that shows that the younger people are, the more liberal they are, progressive they are, and that younger people are less bothered by issues of race and are more tolerant of various lifestyles than older populations. In other words, the old white conservative population that has dominated America for its first 240 years is basically dying off. When Tucker Carlson and his ilk claim we will not be replaced, they're only pointing out the fact that actually they are being replaced. As Charles Blow points out, conservatives have done everything they can to try to stop this from happening, doing everything from stopping immigration to imprisoning black men to even fighting against abortion to try to make sure that white women have more children. None of it has worked, though, according to the census. And this is the fundamental change that is driving the rise in white supremacy across the country. And it's why, frankly, Republicans want to stop these people from voting. I mean, when they talk about stop the steal, they're not talking about the, some kind of fraud that occurred. They're talking about the fact that these people, these other people who don't look like us, if they hadn't voted, Donald Trump would have been elected. So we've got to stop them from voting. And in fact, as G. Elliot Morris pointed out in another newsletter, which I'll also link to down below, polling shows a significant difference on the view of self-government between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats believe voting is a fundamental right that should be encouraged, whereas Republicans believe that voting should be restricted to a few people and should be treated as a privilege. In other words, they're trying to stop people who don't look like them from voting because they don't like the way that they're voting. And the bigger problem is, if the people who don't look like them all vote, then they're going to outvote the white people who've been controlling the country for the first 240 years of its existence. When Donald Trump says, make America great again, he's talking about going back to a time when white people were firmly in control, and especially white men were firmly in control, and they didn't have to worry about this rise of tolerance among young people who are of various races mixed together. This data helps explain a couple of things. For starters, it helps explain the partisanship that we're seeing right now. 
This is a fundamental decision that America is making right now. Do we want to be a true multiracial democracy or do we want to go down the path of white supremacy? There's no compromise between those two. If white supremacists go a little bit down the path toward democracy, we're going to have a true multiracial democracy. On the other hand, if people who believe in democracy go a little bit down the path of authoritarianism and white supremacy, then we're not going to have a multiracial democracy. You can't have both at the same time time. And to white supremacists who've enjoyed the fact that they've been able to have privilege in this country purely by the function of their race, this is a terrifying prospect. And people of color who don't look like that majority who've controlled the country for so long are now becoming the new majority. And they don't like the fact that they've been suppressed for so long. This isn't simply an issue of bipartisanship or different party members not getting along. This is a fundamental question of what's our democracy going to look like. And there is no compromise there, I'm afraid. This data also shows why there was an increase in vote for Donald Trump among certain Hispanic populations and even among certain black men. That seems so contrary to what you would expect given the centrality of racism and anti-immigrant hysteria to Donald Trump. But Donald Trump wasn't only targeting people who look different as a result of their race. He was also targeting people who are different because of their religion, like Muslims, for example. Or he was targeting people who are different because of their sexual orientation. The entire LGBTQ community was attacked by him. And as a result, if you're a Hispanic person or a black person who happens to be misogynistic or happens to be anti-gay rights or happens to be scared of Muslims, well, you know what? Donald Trump doesn't look so bad after all. Yes, it's true that the biggest predictor of support for Donald Trump is your level of racial antagonism. But it's not just racial antagonism. It's antagonism toward any number of groups, whether they be Muslims or the LGBTQ community. Essentially, anybody who hates likes Donald Trump. And the extent to which America's population is becoming less sordid and more combined and more mixed together with different races being mixed together and gay people becoming central to our communities, the less ability there is to be able to hate the unknown. These other groups who you were taught to hate become nothing more than just other people. Finally, this answers the question over which party is more to blame for the shift to extremism. To Democrats like me, it sure seems like Republicans are way out there. But data seems to show that it's actually the left who've been moving further. And I think the explanation for this is simply that society is changing very rapidly. And that's what's scary to these conservative Trump supporters. It's not that people on the left are moving faster or on the assault against conservatives. It's the fact that people on the left are moving with society, whereas the conservatives are basically refusing to move. And as society goes further and further in this direction of a multiracial democracy, the conservatives are increasingly going to be left behind. So what's their response? Well, their response is to try to stop people from voting. Because the more that they're able to stop these growing populations from voting, the longer they'll be able to hold on to the power that really is passing them by very quickly. Well, if you agree with me or disagree with me, or if you have any questions about the census data, I'd love to see your comments down below. And if you could give me a like or subscribe to this channel, that'd be a huge help. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.